Hey everyone, Michael here. Casey. Sharon. It's been a while. It's yep, been, it's been too long. For real. It's been a very long time. But yeah. a lot has happened in this short amount of time. We've had a lot of fun, a lot of ministry moments. Mm -hmm. And anyway, today we want to focus on evangelism. Because a lot of people in these last days that we know are here. There's a lot of questions that we've gotten, that I've gotten about evangelism and about people's gifts, people's callings, people's um, need to feel like they're helping build the kingdom. So today I want to interview Michael because he's been actively evangelizing mm, yeah. in different cities and different places in our hometown. So. Casey, do you want to start off with the questions that would be helpful to the viewers? Uh, I guess. I'll also just ask some questions that I feel like, that I ask sometimes and I feel like maybe you guys would ask. I guess it'd just be a good question is, how do you start evangelizing? Like, how do you start that? Where do you start? <laughs> well, it has to, I, from my own experience, it has to start where you're like, um, where your mind is set on. And um, you have to look at understanding too that um, these are souls, you know what I mean? Like these are souls that are needing to be saved. And you gotta, you gotta value a soul enough to be able to speak to a person to begin with. And you also have to like, kind of like, <clears throat> have like a, an appreciation for the gospel because it's like, a great question to ask yourself to begin with is like what does it mean to be saved you know like it's just an in general question because like most times when you ask someone that they're like well it's having a relationship with jesus having all this being saved from having to go to like like hell and it's like well yeah that's all true but let's make it more simpler and realize that what what it means to be saved is to be saved from something coming at you you know what i mean like like someone pulling you away from something, like the essence of being saved. To be rescued. Yeah, rescued, basically. And Jesus said he didn't come to condemn the world, he came to save it. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. Which means that a lot of people I have heard in conversations when I talk with people just out in the world, they ask about condemnation or they are coming at it from a feeling of condemnation and when someone comes up to them and says hey repent and be saved they take it the wrong way because we've all been raised a certain way or we've heard a certain thing so I want to start with the word repent as part of my discussion of questions for your experience because Jesus always said repent Mm -hmm. Not, he didn't use those words, but the word repent means to turn from sin and follow him. And he did say that a lot. He mm -hmm. said, come and follow me. He said to the woman, you know, who was going to be stoned, go and sin no more. Um, he acknowledged the fact that there's a turning away from sin that has to happen in order to have a better relationship and ability to follow him so that we can show others. And in your evangelism of people, where does that word and that fall in people who you might come into contact with on the street who don't know anything about Christ? Mm. Have you had any experience with that? That's a great question. Um, yeah, I have. Um, <clears throat> it's, you, you gotta, you gotta be like, you gotta understand who you're speaking to to begin with, and you gotta know their background as well, too, so that, because that can actually help you out with understanding how to even approach a conversation to begin with. And what I always first, what I always start with is like, do you believe in God? Like, do you have a relate, how's your relationship with God? Like, like, do you, um, have you heard of like the Bible before? Have you read the Bible? Like just questions like that. And if you're able to get like a clear understanding of where they're from, like let's say they were a Catholic at one point or a Christian, but then they fell off. 
then you can you can help them be able to find a point of reference to some of the things that we know that they know as well. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the and the part of that is the um, the Ten Commandments because it says in the Bible and I don't I'm gonna paraphrase it of course but like the like it says that the Ten Commandments are spiritual meaning that they bring forward death but the gospel brings forward life. What the what the commandments do which are the moral laws they show us what we've done wrong and how we sin against god and then what is our sentencing because it says in the bible that the wages of sin is death when you're able to help someone recognize that and you're able to help them realize hey like you actually need someone to cover you because you can't just come up to the judge and be like judge i'm so sorry for everything that i did even though i just like robbed the bank and i killed people it's like the judge is going to be like well no duh you should be sorry about it you got to pay for it. It was wrong. But then you got to help them remember that someone, like, someone paid for it. And that's Jesus. Right. So I think that's something really important to recognize, too. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of people have never heard that. But at the time that judgment will fall on all, we have an advocate who has already reconnected us to this throne of grace where our debts are paid eternally and because we chose to follow jesus and a lot of people don't think of it that way because they've really never heard it you know there's a lot of churches in the world but there's only one gospel mm. and the acts 242 church was started with the original disciples and it was pretty much the gospel being spoken as the living word of Christ alive in them to a fallen world, first to the Jews, first to the ones that he came for, and then to the rest of the world, the Gentiles. And those dots are not often connected anymore in depth or in detail to where people can understand what the true church of Jesus Christ is and that it's the embodiment of Christ himself in the believers who believe that he came, that he took our sin, that he died, that he rose again, and that he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, right? So that is the gospel. And he himself said that at the time he goes to be with the Father, he would then send himself in the form of the Holy Spirit, right? The personhood of the Spirit of God alive in them to do what he did and greater things so for my experience it's always been helpful to explain all of that so that someone has that and that's what we've seen michael do recently because his age group and the people that he meets like in his job who are out and about he's told us so many stories and that's why we want him to share those today mm. because they're all different but we live in a time where the gospel has either been diluted convoluted uh just misrepresented ignored or just falsified yeah, and i categorize all of that as the american gospel yes because <clears throat> <clears throat> like I was saying earlier, you got to understand who you're like, who you're speaking towards. Like, it's mm -hmm. like a car, it's like a car salesman. You got to know your, like, you got to know your customers. You got to know your audience. Yeah, evangelism is kind of sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's you're like, selling the gospel. <laughs> you are, you are giving freely what was freely given to you at some point, And the Holy Spirit does the rest. Mm -hmm. And we are a willing vessel who does it freely. Mm -hmm yeah and um like there's gotta from what i've experienced there's there has to be like some kind of balance because i mean you can say that you can do it in a progressive way or you can do it in a fire and brimstone way you know what i mean to where you're just like barking at someone about <laughs> repentance and stuff and it's like although you're you're putting in good efforts but it's not necessarily producing the fruits that are necessary which is why you gotta like like love on person love on someone first and help them recognize where they're at because you're using the fire and brimstone to help them acknowledge something serious 
while you're using the progressive side, progressive side of showing them that there's a way out of it. Mm -hmm. And the and the, and the idea that we have to repent to be saved. Everything in Acts that the original church did was in this order. It was preach their testimony of Christ, who he was, what he did for them. The spirit fell on them and, and pricked them in their hearts. It made them aware, and then they got baptized. That was the progression of how people were brought into and became part of the church. They heard and then responded and had a change of heart and wanted to follow Jesus so that they could help others do the same thing. And it's quite simple. And to have any other message is, is not necessary. Mm -hmm. It's all to some other end. The end result of the gospel in any day, in any time of history since Jesus was here, has not changed one bit. It is the same power. It's the same message. It's the same love of the souls who are not righteous, who can be made righteous through Jesus. He came for the sinner and the one who needs or acknowledges they aren't perfect and that they are in a sinful world because none are not. Well, let me ask you this question. Like, how do you help someone see that? Like, how do you? We don't. Someone? The Holy Spirit does. And that's what you've witnessed. You've spoken the truth and then they either accept it or they don't. They <clears throat> either receive it or they don't. But... The Holy Spirit, through love and through the power of the truth, the absolute truth of the gospel, and the spirit of truth, who is the Holy Spirit, he operates in his way for that person. Now, loving them and, and showing them that value in the kingdom, that they are loved and that they're valued and that God values them, we are always to do that. But it doesn't mean if we do that, that they will accept it. It only means that we have loved them the way he wants us to. And I think a lot of people end up in a, in a place where they feel like, oh, well, you know, I try to evangelize, but it doesn't do any good. And I've been there, we've all been there when you started out. It's like you don't know if you're really helping or hurting somebody with the, with the gospel. But if you stick to the truth, and this is what I have found, if you just stick to his story, his story, and how his story has affected your life, it's a witness. And, and witnesses are important in the gospel because mm -hmm. our witness of what the Holy Spirit, Christ, and God have done in our lives will never return void. It will never not produce what it intends, what he intends for it to produce. Ever. It will always. And then you get into the difference between wanting to get praises for yourself or praises for God. Do you want that person to follow you because of what you know? Or do you want that person to follow God because of who God is? And that is one of the biggest deciding factors of a lot of ministries that, that go the wrong direction. Um, and it's one of the telltale signs of who is following the real Jesus and the real gospel. Because the real gospel is about kingdom building of what you said, souls. <laughs> It's, it's about bringing home the lost sheep and, you know, we have to be willing to go out and find that one, just like he found us. And 
and we're all we are all eligible for that so I think I think that some of the most powerful things that the two of you have done that I've seen recently were times when you've just called me up or I've called you and I'm like where are you and you're like oh we're down in so-and-so we're helping so-and-so and you're literally on the street with people who have nothing or are in a predicament where they need to know that someone cares because everything else around them tells them that no one does and Jesus never qualified people based on their history right he loves us enough to tell us our history is not as important as our future <laughs> with him. So. <laughs> and, and you guys are living it and doing it. Well, and we've all done it with different people that we've, you know, we, we're willing for those people to be brought to us and we're willing for that to happen. And and I think, I think that's probably one of the biggest things that, you know, if evangelism is your gift or your calling, it's one of those things that once you're willing, he brings them to you. He, you will see them. You will see all the people that need him. And it's not overwhelming. It's, it's his yoke is, is light and it just operates the way he wants and it's just a beautiful thing and and I'm grateful that we get to do stuff mm -hmm. for God and one another but which of the stories do you like the best of you've seen where God has you know done the greatest miracle or work in that <clears throat> moment um, of changing their heart right before you I mean one thing I have to recognize too is um, or the one of the biggest things to recognize when it comes to evangelism is that sometimes we want things to be immediate and sometimes we want success out of it because that's what we genuinely desire but all we have to all we have to do is recognize that we're just planting seeds you know and god does the watering the holy spirit does the watering but i mean god has shown me an example of something that is actually like very fruitful it was recently i was just talking to this young man outside like uh next to a gas station and i was just sharing him the gospel and sharing him like the rawness of the gospel and then i was also just helping him understand that like that none of us are a good person because that's another thing i wanted to say too that you have to you have to remember too that a lot of people think that they're good enough because when you ask them what do you think like how do i gain eternity or right. or do you think you'll go to heaven they'll say yes and then you'll you, you'll ask them why and they'll say well because i'm a good person but the bible says that there's no good person so you got to acknowledge that too, because when you look at everything else, you realize, wow, I'm really not a good person. I really shouldn't be claiming that because the only good person that had ever existed was Jesus. Mm -hmm. I mean, he sets that example and we see it all throughout the gospels. So, um, so yeah, I was like, I'm talking to this guy and then he was just acknowledging all these things. And then he told me, you know what, I'm just so grateful that there was someone who at least knowledge acknowledged me and was wanting to love on me and show me love and, compa and compassion mm -hmm. and I told him yeah dude like the reason why I'm sharing this to you is because I just love you I genuinely I want to see you in heaven you know I care for your soul I freaking love you as a brother man like 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 who like when you see someone who why, why wouldn't you want to see them in heaven even if they're their enemy when Jesus tells us to love on your enemy right so it's like <laughs> we have to recognize that too so that's something that yeah that's a, that was a moment that i had recently yeah and i'd asked him like um if he was like interested in joining this group that we're in and like 
like and he was also wondering about which church i went to all this stuff like he just had a bigger interest because it seemed like he was actually seeking so that was a moment that god had planned which was amazing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he yeah and then i asked him when he was going to repent and he said it's like as soon as i can so then i, I just prayed with him I, I prayed that like i i prayed that he would biblically repent and that he would come to the cross and then he would realize that that's the greatest choice that he could ever make in his life because i also told him too that everything is like folly everything is vanity i mean we work so hard for a vehicle but the vehicle breaks down and it can easily be towed away and disappear out of our life or we can work so hard for a job and then let's say the job is like shut down because <laughs> like finances don't work out it's like everything it, like and you don't and you don't know when you're like you don't know when the time of your death is too because you also have to acknowledge that too because it says in the bible that everyone is afraid of death and i'm not and like those are one of the things that you have to acknowledge too because one of the greatest aspects from the gospel that i've realized is what it does for you it, it gives you the will to live you know it gives you the will to realize that like hey if i want to live i have to like die in essence but die like to where i completely change as a person and let go of everything that i've so desired to follow someone who can give me eternity and who's promised it right mm -hmm. a promise that breaks any other like promises yeah. promises that like is bigger than anything we could ever like imagine because it's coming from god himself right and it does have to start with fear of the lord yeah fear a healthy fear of the lord knows that he's the one who actually determines your eternal fate and God is the one, but he gave us the solution and cure in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So even when you don't yet believe in Christ, a healthy fear of the Lord is what a lot of people are walking around with. They just don't know Jesus yet. And they might know that they need God, but they don't know what that means. They don't know, they don't know why they have a yearning inside that's like, I know I should do this. I know I need this. I know this. But he's the one who gives us the strength and the ability to do it. And the reason that he does and how he does is through his Holy Spirit. And we are temples or houses or receptacles or filters of that. Mm -hmm. So without Christ, there's no cure for the human soul. It doesn't happen any other way and everyone's walking around with wounds and things that have happened to them and you take all those wounds and those things that have happened and they can morph into other things and they can be attached to other spiritual problems and they can become something else that God never intended so you end up with the need for the cure and the world hated Jesus because the world only wanted God and the gods that it wanted. And he came to disrupt that because they had such a hard time following the creator God. And that's a part of the truth and the story and the gospel beginnings of how and why Jesus came. And everyone has this need like michael and casey and i have found in when we're talking with people that we don't know but we know they're hurting is that emptiness or that for, they feel forsaken or forgotten or um lost lost in a world that doesn't value them correctly and it's 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 the biggest piece of that puzzle that helps everyone apply the Bible correctly because it's a whole story <laughs> and it the gospel of Jesus Christ is the key that unlocks the rest of of your life mm -hmm. and yeah so um I guess a word of advice if you if it's in your heart to start evangelizing um first 
definitely pray about it. Definitely be open to what God's going to lead you towards. Because, I mean, that, that pressure will be applied when it comes to uh, being out there. Because you're out there, you know. But also recognizing, too, that, um, that God is so sovereign and a lot bigger than the problem where he's already taken care of it and you'll be walking out safely at least even if it doesn't go well at least you had placed that plant at least you have placed that seed so it can be grown and like it says in the bible some fall on good ground some right. fall on bad ground like we're just planters right one thing too that I like recognizing too is like practicing how to deny yourself too because i mean even if I, I'm still evangelizing, of course, there's moments where I'm like, you know, I'm good. Or like, or like I just start making excuses for myself. But those are moments where we can deny ourselves and we can bear our cross and we can go to the loss, you know, because it's, it's, that's just what we're called to do. It's like, it's what Paul says. Woe is me if I don't preach the gospel, you know, it's like, woe is me if I'm not sharing something beautiful that I received that the other person needs you know so recognizing that too is important and being led by the spirit too mm -hmm. not being led by what you're right. thinking and what exactly. you're feeling because that's happened to me before like i'm thinking that okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and then i do it and it goes bad because i was thinking that i have to do it and i have to take care of it right while i like and then i realized that i always have to stay prayed up i always have to pray before i go i have to realize that like God's going to be the one speaking through me. He's going to make all the knowledge make sense for the person. And he's going to be able to, t like, he's going to be able to sp speak to them personally. So the plant will be planted. So the seed will be planted, in essence. Mm -hmm. It just made me realize, like, you know how we were talking about at that Bible study, how, like, God is love. And, you mm -hmm. know, the whole, like, if I speak in angelic tongue, but I don't have love. Right. It's like, in that moment... You could speak all these, like, things, but if you don't have love, if you don't have God, mm -hmm. then it's just going to sound like clanging. It's not going to mm -hmm. make sense. Yeah. Right. I've, so I've, ex I've experienced that myself. I've sounded like clinging. Like, I've sounded <laughs> terrible at times because I, I wasn't doing it out of love. I right. was doing it. I was almost out of fear. Well, yeah, that. right. And I was kind of telling myself that, oh, it's the obedience that I have to follow. But, like, where, how far is that going to take that, me if I'm not trusting in Christ, right. if I'm not trusting in the Holy Spirit? And that's a, a really good point for anyone who's listening who's just starting to answer a call to evangelize and go and make disciples. It is always the Holy Spirit's nudging and work of his timing that we rely on mm. you know but you don't learn that until you've learned it <laughs> or until you start doing it right. you start working until it happens muscle. you don't understand what it means and you know in in acts it it happened multiple times where someone would have a dream and they'd mm. be redirected uh they would the holy spirit uh, shut down Asia to them at one time just so that they would be redirected to another area because there was a need. Um, things will happen that look like adversity, but they're actually redirection or it's, you know, I'm going to take you to this place. So you listen to the Holy Spirit. He'll take you to a neighborhood and then there won't be anybody there, but it's because something's going to redirect you to the person that's that he wants you to reach. Yeah. Um, always know that that happens a lot. Maybe like and yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we can't, we're not, there's no condemnation for trying. Mm -hmm. um, Amen. You don't, you don't have to worry about, oh, did I do this? It's not about you. Mm -hmm. Amen, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. not about us. It's about, it's about being willing yeah. to be about him. <laughs> And, and that's it. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's like, at least, but, but again, until yeah. you learn that you don't, you don't understand it fully mm. until, until you, until it happens and you can count on it and then you trust it and you see that it is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, which falls on us to go and that Pentecost moment, personal Pentecost moment where you have become, um, 
readied to go and do. And that's a real thing. And that impartation still happens today. It's still the same way as it was back when Peter and Paul and all the disciples were teaching how to be the church and evangelize and teach and pastor. Mm -hmm. And it's no different. It might look different today, but the way it's supposed to be is no different. That still operates the same way if you do it that way. You know, and if you participate in it the way that God taught us in Acts. Yeah, one thing also too that will help a lot is like they all the whole aspect of renewing your mind and understanding that like that there's a system that is keeping people in a certain place, you know, and that it's easy to fall into it. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to think that you need to separate yourself from others because it's beneficial for your end. When in reality, it can actually sharpen you or it can actually mm -hmm. make you become stronger in your faith because it's a moment of pressure to be able to strengthen your faith. Otherwise, and again, it's not about us. Exactly. Well, that's what I... <laughs> and that's Right? Well, I'm like, yeah. And that's what you find out in those moments. It's like, this isn't about you. Right, because like like I was saying, when you renew your mind and you're able to see past right. that system that mm -hmm. everyone's living in, yes. you see that there's a reason why like, why God made it that way, you know? Oh, why absolutely. God works in that way. Well, the empowerment of, of, of knowing that it's not about us means that it's all Jesus. Mm -hmm. And how empowering is that? Yeah. To know that that's what we're going forth with. We don't have to have that strength because he's the one that's strong in us and in the world, you know, in his capacity and the way that he does it. It's even more empowering. At least that's been my experience of knowing that I don't have to, I don't have to be anything but his. Mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are his. I, you know, I, and I see it, it active and it's amazing. He's amazing and he loves everyone, even though they might not yet love him. He loves you. He loves you. <laughs> yep. Okay, so what is your favorite evangelist moment like it? One of your jobs, don't name the places, but one of your jobs or one of your... Oh, there was this one cool I know, moment. I knew there was one. There was one cool <laughs> moment. About. Um, it was like a while ago at the place where I worked. It was this new hire who, um, who I just like, I told her, I was like, I think I just told her like, Jesus loves you. And, like, he just wants a relationship with you. Like, just go back to church. And she was like, man, it's weird that you say that because some, like, people have just been telling me that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. Mm -hmm. I've had that <laughs> it was just yeah. one of those moments. And that's why we need the body because we're supposed to encourage one yeah, another. Yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. To make disciples. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, to help encourage one another in, mm -hmm. in our walk. Yeah, which is what our channel is about. We're trying to just encourage people to be the person God created them to be for the kingdom building and for the purpose of their best relationship with him because he's the only one that knows each one of us perfectly Amen. we can just help one another work on that relationship mm -hmm. and, You're right. yeah I think one thing we need to recognize too is to pray for the people who are out there. Mm -hmm. Pray for the people that they're safe and that they're kept safe, especially right. when times are getting Missionaries, worse. Missionaries, yeah. Yeah. All the people right. who are on because, the ground. Yeah. All of our efforts yeah. and things we want to do each week, and yeah, we we pray for all of that. And if you have a ministry, if you yourself have a ministry, and you want to put it in our comments, we will add it to our prayer list to mm -hmm. pray for it but we we pray over everyone who we think ever watches any of our videos and it has been a while since we've done anything because i had to wrap up my degree and it was it was really uh i was really exhausted so i kind of took a break after that because my brain hurt 
and <laughs> I'm just now getting back to to being able to uh, feel alive again. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I'm changing vocations. I'm adding more um, things to my schedule and things are just always evolving and I always have to go forward. I'm not the kind of person that can go backwards. If I'm doing something one way, I have to keep evolving and keep going forward. And um, I, I recently made a job decision because I felt like I was going backwards <laughs> and that was thanks to the pandemic <laughs> so but God knows everything and I don't worry about it I just keep going forward <laughs> and we want you to do so yeah do you have any other times um I just thought of the one that, like, the one Casey was talking about, I've had that before, too, where I felt like this talk to someone, and I did, and then they were like, you know what, like, you're right, I should go back, like, I used to be a whole part of it, but then, you know, like, this, this, and that, but now, you know what, I think I'm gonna do it. I just thought it was cool, because, like, it's evangelism cool. just, is just so broad, and such a awesome way because like what Sharon was saying it's not about us like it's about however God's going to speak to that person we just have to be readily available to be yeah. the vessel okay. and I think there's I think there's a there's a weird thing that goes on in the western church or maybe just in the church in general maybe it's just a gate that's open that the enemy just loves to beat people up on I I I hear sometimes certain beliefs that it doesn't matter what we do because whoever's going to go to heaven's going to heaven and it doesn't matter and oh like it's like already predestined type yeah thing. yeah and i don't think jesus would have said all the stuff he said if that wasn't if that was if that was the case of our lives just being apathetic and not doing what we could to love other people. Hmm. And then on the flip side of that, there's another side of beliefs that say, just love people. You don't have to tell them anything about Christ or the Bible. That's you just the love one them. I do not like. <laughs> and it's like, like you're just it's like people. somewhere between those two is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and the truth is all the red letters. If you are somewhere on one of those ends, read the red letters and, and yeah. just meditate on them and read them and take them in and listen to Christ speak to your heart and understand more than you do now and see if it helps you with maybe how you were indoctrinated or how you've believed because we are nothing without him this is not about anyone exalting themselves up to be oh i'm this or i'm that that's never the mm -hmm. case that is not what the disciples did mm -hmm. and we are of no part of that's that that's what they did at first in Ever. the gospel until well, jesus started yeah. helping them recognize like you have to be so willing to accept right. the, the kingdom as a child you know you have to like or you have to let everything go, like the rich young ruler, like, man. Well, like, that's a whole nother thing. Well, we There's a lot that. on that <laughs> that's just broke down and so simple and, and mm. could free a lot of people from a lot of bad indoctrination. Money is an area that Jesus said we have to let go of mm -hmm. and give cheerfully and freely. Yeah, Those are the terms he used and those are the contexts. Now, it's a resource, totally. But if your provision comes from the world, then you will protect it like the world does, mm. and you will not do what God wants you to do with it. Because you can't serve God and mammon. Mm. Um, I'm so glad mm. you brought that one point up because I only have one point to say we can do a whole nother video on money mm -hmm. but <laughs> today's should. world today's world there is a very big problem with churches hoarding treasures and money 
Uh, we should leave it there. And we'll That's just leave it video. there. <laughs> That's a whole Til video. Tune in for the next video <laughs> on money. <laughs> yeah. But the evangelism, if money was something that evangelists are supposed to take with them, Jesus would have said, okay, now make sure you, you build, you just get a bag and you just fill it with money and take yeah, it on your trip. <laughs> right. But he didn't. The mm -hmm. examples, the, the key points of money are the rich young ruler, Ananias and Sapphira, mm. and yeah. cheerful giving. Yeah. Right? <sighs> yeah. Good stuff. It's not about keeping. It's not about, you know, a, a, whole, whole, a whole other video. A whole other video. But we... We want to encourage all the evangelists today and anyone who feels like they they are called to go. Go. Um, it's time to go. Dude, it's like, always time if, to go. If, if, if you feel led to go, go. If you're in and, Cincinnati. And write us. Yeah, right, if you're call in Cincinnati, us. If you're in Cincinnati and you're write watching us, this, like, hit me up. I'll, I will go yeah. out. Like, I don't care, man. Because it's not about us. That's like, right. It's not. That's right. That's right. We. Who are we, we to little, deny man. the gospel to... To them. Every living person. Every yeah, living creature. Right. right. Woe is me, man. Yeah. So, you want to close us out? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, too. Uh, I don't know. I just had a brain fart. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna do a video soon with a friend. I don't. We haven't picked a topic yet, but um, we'll see how that's gonna go. I want to do it by. Uh, at least maybe next week. I, we keep pushing it off, but I, I really want to do it. So look out for that. And we also want to, we want to make sure you, you, you feel that you have a place that can discuss things with you if you are their age. We have a great need for you at this age in your mid to upper 20s or 20 to 35 to rise up in your hearts, you know what's right and wrong, and you know there's a lot of wrong going on. Oh, you know people. it, man. Do you, and, you can't deny it. And we, we know that you're looking for others that feel the same way, mm -hmm. and it's hard to find. Yes. And we need that community, and we need to build that community as best we can, um, locally, online, um, and yeah. So we also have a group called the Core. We're gonna. That's, we want to do podcasts. We're gonna do. Yeah. A, we're gonna do a podcast, and I'm gonna promote it in here for sure. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends is in it, so it's definitely exciting. And it would be so cool to have a podcast where you guys zoom with different people from all over the world, your age, to find out the true temperature of those that are seeking or want the truth, the absolute truth. Mm, of this yeah. of 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 god and Cause people i mean my, like we talked about this before but my age they're not dumb dude like they're not stupid like they're not they, stupid to they, the deceptions right That's, they can see god has it. placed this age and, and they, generation yeah. this last generation to to rise up yeah and for real yeah there's no doubt i see it <laughs> i see it we're the last generation y'all <laughs> the remnant man that's what i call them we're the remnant. we're remnants everywhere there's a remnant all over the world yeah, all true. of us but so pray us out pray for pray for the people who any age who feel called to evangelize we're okay. gonna Absolutely. pray mm -hmm. father god we thank you for this opportunity of coming together to just glorify you and not ourselves because we always want to recognize that too mm -hmm. lord we thank you that you've given us this platform to be able to use to bless others and to sharpen others too lord we thank you for being able to share your words and share the good news about who you are. Father, I pray in boldness and in strength that you will strengthen the people who are seeking out to save, help people find Jesus so that their souls may be saved. Lord, I pray that you strengthen them, that you give them boldness, that you give them reassurance, that you just guide them to the people that you've set before them so that they can help them recognize how loving and merciful God you are, how you truly are, Lord. Lord, we just want to thank you. We want you to be glorified each and every moment through everything that we do. Lord, we also want to pray for people my age and people 
in Sharon's age, we want to pray that they have all a ages. revival. <laughs> mm -hmm. That everyone has this revival, that we all just seek you out in deeper ways so that we can get to know you and we can just share that amongst ourselves. Lord, I pray that my age group just rises up and breaks through all of the deception so that they can glorify you so that we can come together and just be bold in your goodness. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Yay. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Tune in. <laughs>